Hi everyone, welcome. It's Happy Women's Day. It's the Monday, the 9th of August. So welcome to join the conversation. This is the second session for today. So it's an awesome day where I'm surrounded by coaches. I don't know how this came about. It's only today, last night when I was checking the itinerary of saying, who are the ladies I'll be interviewing and it happens to be coaches, so I'm quite honored by that. My name is Transformation Coach Mashudu Mbele, it's Yeni as well. I'm also a Negative Emotional Therapy Practitioner. I'm doing the Join the Conversation, which is also part of Women Way, which is Women Emancipate Yourself. Because we believe that when you empower women, we are empowering a nation and we are empowering generations. And join the conversation is about having conversations with women from different walks of life. It doesn't matter where you are from. And if you believe that if you've got a message to share, do send a comment if you are here on Facebook or if you're on YouTube. So do say I want to participate. So these conversations I've been challenged yesterday to make them continuous so that it doesn't end in August. And yes, I'm going to rise to the occasion, then I'll, I'll, I'll continue doing them throughout the year. But they, mo they won't be as intense like now where I've got so many lined up. And as well, if there are guys who might be listening to this, please do share. And as you are coming through, I'm just going to check on my Facebook news there. So as you're coming through, do say hi, and if you've got questions for my guest, do ask, and then I'll relay the questions for you. And, and another thing that I want to share as well is that join the conversation is not only about me. Wherever you are, you don't have to wait for this platform like Facebook or Zoom to have those conversations. You can have them in your small circles, in your society, anywhere, so that we can empower each other, because it's all about planting a seed inspiring others and empowering others so to my find that the guests that i have lined up this month they might help they might plant a seed they might help someone from saying now i'm gonna commit suicide it's the end of the world and they'll realize from the stories that people are gonna share throughout this whole month that it's not only about them and if you feel like your problem is only by yourself go to steps they say and look at how many people who've got depression, who've got anxiety, who've got this and this. So each time you just feel like it's only you, just go to stairs, they say, and Google and see how many people it just shows you that it's not only you, which shows that there is a solution. You just have to ask for help. So once more, welcome. If you're on Facebook, welcome. On Zoom, welcome. And if you're on YouTube, on YouTube welcome, guys. So, I'd like to hand over to my beautiful guest that I have this afternoon. So please introduce yourself. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. My name is Tandiwe Khaobepe. I am a writer, I am a purpose coach, and creativ creativity coach. I also work in the television and film industry as a um, production manager. Uh, yes, and that's about what I do. I'm also an entrepreneur, actually. <laughs> Thank you so much. So tell us about being a writer and being an entrepreneur. What do you do before I ask you other questions? Can you just expand on that? Okay, so being a writer, um, I've been writing from a very, very young age. Um, I started writing as a journalist for Media24. Uh, um, then after Media24, I went more deeper into the television and film industry as a, in, in production, as a production assistant, production coordinator, and then um, climbed up the ladder to production manager, which I am now. Um, writing is something that um, I'm more of a nonfiction writer. Um, I was very, a few years ago, I really wanted to write my, my, my memoir, um, which I did through the University of Cape Town. And my lecturer had said, um, I, I really needed to expand um, my story. So I spent last year lockdown writing my memoir, which I did finish, it went for edits and I've been sitting on it for the past year. 
and I was sub about to submit it before my 40th birthday last week, but I, um, unfortunately on the day that I was supposed to submit, my father passed away. Um, and then in terms of writing stories for um, the television and film industry, a few years ago, I worked on a, a series called Isibaya, and I was there for about three years working also in the story department. Thank you for sharing that and condolences to your family and to yourself as well. Thank you. And I see we've got four guests in our Facebook. I don't know who they are. <laughs> they are not my friends. I won't even know. So guys, welcome. If you've got any questions for our guests, kindly of you please type them. I'll relay the message to you. And as well, share this post. Because you might find out that what she's sharing today will inspire someone to plant a seed in someone's life. I see we've got Gondi as well. Welcome, Gondi. So my my next question is, what message do you have for us on this special day, being Women's Day? And yeah, I think it's a tall order for you because it's an auspicious Women's Day and we come far as a, as a country. Yeah. Um, what I want to say, you know, I'm a single mother. Um, I've been a mother for the past 13 years. And um, I've realized that us women hold so much power in the destinies of um, our children. And um, it's so very important, you know, um, that we recognize that um, because ultimately whatever your daughter will become, or whatever your son will become is in your hands. And it's all about what you have instilled in your children. So um, I've become a very conscious parent. You know, I just don't parent anyhow, or um, I, I don't do it the same way that my parents did it. In fact, I've had to do a bit of unlearning and readjusting and um, pick on some things that I feel, you know, they resonate. Um, and I also, be, I, I'm, a, I'm a high believer that um, nothing just happens, you know, um, no matter how it looks like, everything happens for a purpose. Um, and when you are connected to spirits or to God, I believe in God, um, you are able to see the signs and put the pieces together. And that's what I love about um, entrepreneurship and the business that I have, my online business, which is called Write Me. Write Me, I really help people connect with spirits, connect with God to um, reconnect with their purpose and reconnect with their creativity through, through writing. Um, because the, this that is the fourth, fourth, first and foremost the, something that is really, 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 really important. Otherwise, when you don't know your purpose, you know um, it's 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 very difficult to live a happy and fulfilling life. And I say this because I look at my father's life. You know, um, he was a very intelligent man, um, had everything going for him very successful. Um, we had, a, we lived in an abandoned life, um, materially under his care, um, though um, he had certain obstacles and challenges in life due to, um, uh, you know, um, alcohol addiction. And, um, but when I was writing his obituary um, for his funeral, I saw the journey and I realized that actually, no matter what, no matter which way you decide, you know, because God has given us freedom of choice, no matter which way you decide to go, God will still fulfill his purpose for your life. So you can decide to reconnect with that purpose and live within your calling sooner <laughs> than later. But there are no shortcuts to life. Um, wherever God is um, taking you, and no matter whatever decisions that you make, um, you will still get there. Um, so it's really, it's really, really up to you to 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 really um, heal whatever it is that you need to heal, and uh, reconnect with what you were called here to do. Thank you. 
and that's not people's voices, but um, God's voice. There's a heart that came out from Facebook as you are talking. So we also have Matsupa as well, who has joined us. Welcome. I would like you to expand on what is conscious parenting. Cautious parenting is, you know, I grew up from a time when the adult was always right. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do, even if you were right, you know, it, they were right. In fact, I grew up in a time where you were not even allowed to speak. <laughs> you just do what they say. So for me, conscious parenting is realizing that, um, um, it's not necessarily about um, the, the age, as we were told that, you know, you listen, your elders know everything and you listen to your elders and that's it and it stops there. And um, we don't listen to, you know, to what children have to say because the elders know it all, but um, they don't know it all. As we know, I know, Every child that is born is born a spirit being. We're all born spirit beings, you know? Um, and conscious parenting for me um, has become where I listen to my children. I know I know what is right. And I know the direction that I want things to go for them. But also at the same time, I'm very careful to not just implement, implement, implement because of things that I've gotten from other people and da, 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 and this is the way it goes. You know, I, we, we don't run in a machine. We run in a, in a, in a, in a in, because we all spirit beings, you know? So conscious parenting, it's about listening to my kids and acknowledging what they are saying. And, and from acknowledging from what they are saying, um, you know, using discretion, to say, yes, you are right. This is the way we should go. I apologize. Um, I, I apologize. Uh, I didn't think of it that way. So it's also me also, um, what is the word to use? It's also me kind of like um, humbling myself, you know, as a parent. Um, because, um, you know, <laughs> A leader of this country, it's not about age, but it's about the wisdom and the calling. Um, a 20 year old could be running our country right now if he was called to run our country and he ha had the wisdom to run our country. So I think with parenting, I've had to uh, recognize that it's not about age, but more about um, me being present in the moment and really listening to what my child is trying to articulate in that moment and um, how I can be respectful to um, their growing, you know, their growth and how they are feeling about what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that I think that is what is conscious parenting, you know, because it's also a journey for myself, you know. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I'll say even for me with my kids, when I look at how I was raised, I wasn't allowed to speak up. <laughs> and mm. mostly I grew up more introverted, even though I'm still introverted, but it's only when I do what I love that people say I'm really introverted. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn and unlearn. And what I've learned from my kids is this unlearning and learning and mm -hmm. what and appreciating what has been planted and appreciating that the gifts that they had. I always say I didn't know how to hug because I was never taught how to hug. I had mm -hmm. to learn from a one year old when I was wow. coming from work each time I'm coming from work. At that time I think he knew. You find him outside at the door, just waiting, just mm. open arms saying, I'm mm. going to hug you. So mm. it's that, and also just being spirited and being playful and all that. It's basically getting out of my of my mm. issue that. Thank mm. you for sharing that. My final yeah. question is, what were the lessons that she learned from your relationship with your dad? Yeah. 
there's a lot and i think i'm also just there's more revelations coming now that he's um passed away you know um but one thing i did learn about my dad i mean my dad was like no matter my um transgressions no matter my issues no matter my challenges he took care of us he provided for us um and one thing about him is that one thing i have never doubted even if he never said i love you um which he did but i've ne i've never doubted his love for us um you know he was bathing us from when we were babies taking care of us which was totally against the way my mother grew up <laughs> you know watching a man help with chores watching a man you know help with the kids um you know he was really really he was there he was very hands on you know um and also he was he was he was a man of peace you know <laughs> i'd be like dad this is something to be angry about okay let's be angry together come on you know but he was just always like no let it be um um he was a people's person he had a very rare sense of humor you know uh, sometimes that does pop out for me you know he had <laughs> in fact last time the, the one time i saw him uh, which was just a few months ago so i said oh dad you look rather dashing you look like you could be a, an, an actor and he responded and he said yes i am i am a hollywood actor <laughs> you know so dad had a he had a rare and unique sense of humor um he loved his grandchildren you know even though he wasn't physically really able to to be with them like he was with us when we were young and with his actually his first grand uh, grand grandson um he he said no they must come over for the holidays for the weekends because he loves the noise <laughs> i'm like okay <laughs> good for you you know um gosh but i've 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 learned so many lessons i mean he passed away two days before um my 40th birthday and i was like oh my goodness what is this you know and here i was wanting i was wanting to hear from aunties and uncles about what they could you know what they could um impart on me for my 40s you know and there he just he went to two days before my birthday and i was like whoa you know first i didn't see <laughs> the light in it you know i was a total i was a, a a total mess um but now i'm like yeah i know he's left me with 40 years 40 years of memories 40 years of lessons you know um yeah my dad forgave um he he forgave easily and um he may have not forgotten um and um he was one person who was he didn't want you to feel the pain so he would rather you know keep his peace what do they say about keep your peace you know um before you, what what is it that they say keep your peace before when you go to court is it to court or where you what what is that saying about um keeping your peace uh i'm not sure i'll google you as you're talking <laughs> yeah i think it's something like say something before you keep your peace or keep your peace i'm not quite sure but um he was the type of person he didn't want you to hurt so he would rather he would ra he internalized the hurt and i think that's why he medicated a lot with alcohol yeah, and you know we don't want to talk about these things but um the honest truth is that i had known him from you know from a young age to be a drinker um and it's quite remarkable that um he was able to be they call them a functioning alcoholic he was able to be a functioning alcoholic because i mean the fathers of my kids um have got all sorts of excuses they don't take care of you know their children at all and um when i look at my dad's life not to applaud the addiction but to say that even with that that you were going through um you still you know you did it 
he made it, you know, he provide, he, he didn't miss out on his calling as a father. He didn't miss out his, on his calling as a, as a husband. Um, he didn't miss out on his calling in his career as an aircraft engineer. Um, he, you know, he actually just didn't miss out on his calling. Um, he had the challenges, et cetera, et cetera, but he's still up until the end, um, you know, he fulfilled his calling. Yeah, he fulfilled his calling. And God called him to be, yeah, he fulfilled his calling, you know, which is rather incredible. I don't think he knew his calling. Um, and if he did, I don't think he, he did it in a standard way, you know. Um, I think he just carried on living and, um, you know, I, the, the only man that I've seen cry is actually my dad. <laughs> you know, he was not scared to cry. <laughs> he was not scared to cry. And we were, we were good friends, you know, and I'd watch this guy and I'd be like, what, why is he crying? <laughs> like men don't cry. Um, but um, in bringing it back, bringing it back to um, raising my children, because I've got three sons. Um, I let them cry because I've seen a father who cries, you know, and I tell them that it's okay to cry, you know, and, um, and even when he was going through something, you know, you know, he'd been through a lot. He was not ashamed. He was not ashamed. In fact, I remember even when he went, when um, he had to go to rehab, you know, he was like, he would come back on the weekend, even if he was a little bit tipsy. <laughs> He would come back and he was like, I'm a recovering alcoholic, oh, um, alcoholic you know. Um, so he, he really tried, you know, um, but I think he also just had an addictive personality and it was something that as much as he tried, just it was something that unfortunately just was not leaving him. But um, it was, it's incredible that the, the lives that he changed, you know, by going back to rehab and becoming a counselor and um, helping and healing heroin addicts, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that was rather, 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 rather incredible to hear the testimonials that came in from overseas about all the work that he did in the, in the rehab center. Um, yeah, but otherwise, a warrior he was, a real hero's journey, um, and, uh, you know, all I can say is that to single mothers, um, who, I don't know if the fathers of your children are in their lives or not in their lives, um, let them be in their lives, you know, um, if they can be there in their lives. It's not really necessarily about the money, um, but it's more about the life lessons, not only for the parent, but also for, for the child later on in life. We're not here forever, you know, we're just visiting, you know. Um, and for me, I'll be honest with you, I really didn't plan on having kids. I didn't, I, I, I didn't want kids. Um, and um, before kids came around, I, I, I went through a, um, a lot of depression and um, suicidal attempts. And it was my dad that saved my life um, every single time. Um, I mean, I remember the, the, the one attempt I was in hospital and um, I was paralyzed. Um, I almost died the night and uh, it's my dad who found me and called the ambulance. Um, I don't know what happened, but the next morning when I woke up, it was my dad who was there. Do you wanna take some time? Um, no, I'm okay. Um, it was my dad who was there and, you know, for the longest time, I always just, you know, I, I didn't want this thing life, you know, because for me, 
as much as he medicated with alcohol, for me, I just, I just wanted to end because the pain was a lot. Um, but um, what I can say is that like now when we live in, in the time of Corona and I have kids and I'm a single mother, you know, you just like, oh God, please forgive me. <laughs> Please forgive me, please forgive me because they, my kids need me and there is no ways that, you know, you know, like for me to go before my kids at least have gotten out of school and, you know, they've kind of like can fend for themselves. And I think, you know, when dad saved my life, I think it was, he was saving his daughter's life, you know, trying, saving his daughter's life. But um, now that we are in Corona, it's made me even more, especially becoming a mother, even more um, wanting to live, you know, for these kids, you know. Um, yes, losing a parent is hard. I mean, I've lost both my parents now. Um, and lo I, losing a child, I have an experience, I have an experience of losing, you know, I lost my twin daughters um, six years ago. Um, well, almost, uh, almost seven years ago, I lost my daughters. And um, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I have, I've experienced the pain of, losing a child and I've experienced the pain of losing a parent. And um, what I have to say is that we really need to pull up our socks, <laughs> you know, as the mother, as the father, put those quarrels aside and think about the future generation because they're innocent souls and um, they're not in the world um, because of our plan and our purpose for them but because of God's plan, you know, otherwise they wouldn't be here, you know. Um, so yeah, that's what uh, I'm even more grateful for life now. And um, my prayer to God is please just keep me around until at least my kids you know, are okay, and they can fend for themselves. And that's, and I, I, I think that's what dad did, you know, he was, at least he had an, he was able to have an experience with, with his grandchildren. And, um, and we, uh, we can fend for ourselves now. So, uh, yeah, I don't think he, it, we, we actually quite blessed that he was around until we could fend for ourselves, because I know it's not like that with everybody. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I, uh, I know it was quite emotional. Thank you yeah. and for being vulnerable and sharing your journey with Dad. We appreciate that. Yeah. And there's also a comment from uh, Utu, which is saying she's sending love to you. Your strength is so amazing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And as you are relating the story, you spoke about how your dad assisted you not committing suicide for you to someone who's at the point of wanting to commit suicide at the moment <clears throat> like life they've had it with life everything is like a a big thing so what was a turning point for you what did you do or what can you do Look, the last suicide I came out of, it was after the loss of my mother, actually. <laughs> um, and the one that um, dad came to the rescue, you know, I was actually gone already, but I think his sixth sense had just sent something. Um, one thing about suicide, um, especially on my end, is that um, it's a dark hole. You're not really thinking about, you're not thinking about how anyone's gonna feel when you're gone. You know, you just completely, it's, you just in a dark hole and you're not thinking about anyone else and the effect on everyone else because it's all about 
I guess, I don't know, maybe just your ego, um, your, your ego just playing games on you uh, that, you know, this is, it's the end of the world. Um, and it's not, <laughs> it's not the end of the world. I, I, I do grow up from that. I don't know if it's, it's it, it, if it's a, uh, if it's a stigma of, of if you've got issues, keep it to yourself. <laughs> and um, when you are feeling well, then you come out and you talk to people about it. Uh, I think it's only taken me this, um, the, the, the pandemic to um, realize that it's okay to ask for help. You don't need to reach rock bottom. And um, when we now live in, in a world of social media, where people are not real about what's really going on. Um, it's so easy for me to um, pitch up on, 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 on social media right now, like I am doing and look pretty and everybody think that everything is wonderful and perfect in my life. And a lot of, a lot, all, almost all of us, you know, there's something that is going on behind the scenes. And that's why I believe in the power of of writing and storytelling and sharing our stories. And, um, and really, uh, I, I feel that's where our healing is with sharing stories because when we are able to be authentic with each other about what we are really going through, we realize that actually I'm not alone. <laughs> you know, when somebody like shares their story with me, I'm like, what? I'm not alone, you know? Before my dad passed away, actually, um, the pastor at um, my church online had shared um, a story about his dad. And his dad was going through the same journey that my dad was going through, you know, with the stroke and, um, you know, his dad had a stroke. I mean, my dad had a kidney failure and ankle collapse, et cetera, et cetera. And he shared that story and he shared their journey. and. When he shared his journey, I was like, it's like, you know, my dad passed away like in less than a month later after the, him sharing that story. But it was like, I was already set free because I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. It's, I'm not the only one going through it. So it's so important for us to share our stories about what we are going through. Um, so that we are not driven to arterial motives, if you would call it arterial motives, to, to, to a point where we are thinking, I am the only one who right now doesn't have money. I am the only one who is, you know, uh, uh, whatever you are going through. I'm the only one right now whose dad has passed away. I'm the only one right now whose mom has passed away. I'm the only one right now whose child has passed away. I'm the only one right now who's lost their job. I'm the only one right now, you know, um, because especially with social media, you see so many people flashing, especially in Corona and you're like thinking, but how come everybody seems to be okay? And it just seems like maybe it's me and it's a curse and it's, it's not really that. So I would say, you know what, you're not alone. No matter how much you think you are alone, you are not alone. And whatever it is that you are going through, if you would tap into spirit or you tap into God, you would realize that actually there is something that is coming because you, you don't become whatever it is that has been um, promised for you to become without going through certain steps. You know, Even with the planning of the funeral, we had it all together, you know, we'd like, ah, you know, we've got it all together, whatever, whatever, but there's certain processes you need to go through you, whether you like it or not, you will need to go through a certain family member, you know, even if you feel that you can do it all on your own, you know, you will still need to go through all that. And that's why I say, no matter how it looks like, everything happens for a purpose. And um, we just need to sit back you know, and um, see how it all links together. And sometimes it, it comes immediately depending on how connected you are to spirit. 
Um, and then other times it, it, it will take time for it to, to, to actually, all the pieces to come together and for it to make sense and to understand that, oh, this is why this happened like this and this is, uh, no, 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 and then, you know. Um, but you are, not, you are not alone. And even when you are going through that pain, you know, if there's even at least just that one person that you can talk to, talk to them. Me, I was like that person. I was that person who was like, I'm not talking to anyone. <laughs> I'm not talking to anyone, you know? But I still had someone, you know, even if it was my dad or it was my grandmother, there was always someone that I had, as much as I thought I was alone, you know, I always had somebody to talk to. So it is important. Um, even my dad, who was a drinker, he still had someone to talk to, even if while he drank, you know, he would go to the pub and all those people in the pub know his stories, know his pain, you know. So he's, he, you, it, it's, it's so important, especially when it comes to um, depression and wanting to take your life, that even if it's just talking to that one person, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I just want to tap on what you said earlier about the importance of channeling and also crying because as human beings, we store our emotions in our body. And mm -hmm. part of crying is that healing process that you're undertaking rather than having those stored emotions then later creating what we call disease or cancer or tumor. So it's quite important that you really speak to someone else as Chandra she said was, or find that person because they are never an island head down. And yeah, I see we still have more people on Facebook. Welcome guys, and please share this post. It might heal someone, it might create a trigger, it might inspire someone. And my follow-up question is, what are you busy with? You've told us you're an entrepreneur, you're a writer, you do this, all this. What are the things that you're busy with? that people need to know and how can they get hold of you? Okay, so right now um, I had just, well, well, my memoir, I'm quite excited about my memoir, which was edited and um, it's now supposed to go for final edit and publishing. So my book, um, my book, and then it's the, it's Write Me, Write Me where I help, um, my clients reconnect with their purpose and recover their creativity through writing. Um, and also it's even, it, it even becomes more than that, you know, um, to help them really reconnect, to reconnect to God um, because it's God's voice that has the final say in your life and not other people. So it's right me and I am also freelancing um, as a um, TV production manager um, for various, projects at the moment um yeah that's what i am busy with and i also um into essential oils <laughs> i'm into essential oils um doTERRA so i am also a wellness advocate um in fact i actually did use um essential oils on my dad um you know because he he would have sometimes just when he, he had anxiety and that kind of thing. So I used them on him and they worked quite well. Um, yeah, and that's what I'm into. And yes, first and foremost, motherhood. <laughs> it's a big job. So I've got these three sons of mine and absolute blessings, um, great gifts. Um, yeah, so motherhood is actually the top one at the list, eh? that's what I'm busy with 24 <laughs> seven. Um, yeah, but otherwise what keeps me going, um, is writing, meditating, um, a lot of prayer and praise and worship. I think my sons think we live in a church, <laughs> um, but yeah, we very much, um, very, very connected to God. Um, he, God comes first in our lives. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm busy with. That's what I'm busy with at the moment. Thank you. And we need your socials. How can they get hold of you as well? If okay. Wants, wants to join the Write Me or they want the product, how can they reach out to you? 
Okay. So I am on three networks, actually four. So I'm on WhatsApp status, if that counts. <laughs> and I am on Facebook. I've got a Facebook page called Write Me. Um, usually I do post on there um, about the next up upcoming Write Me journey course, uh, writing course. I'm on LinkedIn and I am on Instagram. I am Tandiwe Khawepe. I don't know all those hashtags and things, but yeah, if you look for Tanduwe Khawepe and you look for Write Me on, on um, Facebook, you will definitely find me. Um, or otherwise you can just DM me on Facebook, right? You can DM me on Facebook, you can DM me on Instagram, or you can WhatsApp me. My number is 071-315-0231, 071 yeah. And that's, that's that, yeah. You can find me on WhatsApp, you can find me on Facebook, or you can find me on Instagram or LinkedIn. As Tandiwe <laughs> Khawe. And I will send you the email addresses and all those things that you need, yeah. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Mm. And as we're about to end, tell us why what you have shared today with everyone and to those who will be listening at a later stage when they click the video or click a replay. So why is this message that you've shared with us today so pertinent to you? Why is it so important? Okay. So for many, many, many years, I kind of figured that like, okay, if I've got it, like, you know, if I am gifted at this, this is, I'm talented at this, this is the way I go. And, you know, just take up the opportunity. And, you know, in fact, by the time you're even leaving, I think it's, it's, it's leaving high school, you know, universities come in um, and suggest this is the career you could do depending on the marks that you got, you know? So I kind of figured that that was the way to go until my life was going in circles. <laughs> I'm like, challenge after challenge. Yes, I'm talented. Yes, I can do X, Y, Z. But like something is missing, man. Like what is missing? And then it was about four years ago while I was working on Isibaya in the, in, the, in, the story, in the story room as part of the story room. I was a um, story coordinator, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that I had the dream and God said, no, 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 darling, you've got it wrong. <laughs> First and foremost, know your purpose. And I think knowing your purpose, people are scared about knowing your purpose and knowing your calling. Uh, and I've been there, I know, um, because they think that I'm going to have to leave my job because that's what I thought. I'm gonna to have to leave my job and then I'm gonna to have to now start afresh with something that I'm being called to do, you know? So there's this fear around um, knowing your purpose because you think you're gonna to have to stop everything and you're gonna to have to go to some mountain, <laughs> you know, to kind of like start over and nobody wants to start over, you know? So that's what I thought. Um, when I got the dream that um, I was supposed to do write me and actually my purpose was X, Y, Z and this was what I was supposed to be doing. So I was like, okay, so now I'm leaving everything that I have known all this time. And um, later on, I, so I did that because I thought that was what I was supposed to do. And later on, God said to me that, no, actually your purpose, your job is your job. Your job is your job to pay your bills, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But your purpose, what you are called here to do, you can do it in your job, in your career, in your business, in your community. It doesn't mean that now you have to now be down and out. Um, and uh, because, because of your purpose. So now you must quit the job, you know, you must quit you must quit the business you must quit whatever it is the career the etc so your calling is something that you do within all those things that you are already talented at or even skilled at things that you came and you learned um because at the end of the day we are all abundant beings and the god that i serve does not want any of us to suffer 
um, I think suffering is something that we bring our we bring onto ourselves because of 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 ignorance and also maybe lack of understanding. Um, so what I would what what I what I want to what I want to say to everybody the reason I am doing this is because God called me to to coach, you know. Um, because first and foremost, when you know your purpose, even whatever happens, you know, the challenges that you go through, the pain that you go through, like even with my dad now, um, I'm able to everything, I'm able to understand uh, better because I know my purpose. And I'm like, even if he didn't know his purpose, I, I can clearly see it you know, from when I had uh, um, written the obituary, which wasn't read at the funeral um, because of certain politics within the family. But I was able to actually, when I went through his journey, I, I was able to see that, oh, okay, even if he didn't know his purpose, this is what his, his purpose was. So, I mean, wouldn't it be nice for you to know what your purpose is and not just for, uh, for, for the day that you die? <laughs> For people to try and figure out, ah, oh, that's why Tandy Way was here, you know, or that's why Ooh, Mashudu was here, you know. Um, so take control. Um, this is something that you can take control. Take control of um, your destiny. Um, already, it has been paved out for you. Um, reconnect with with God, because He's the one who said, "You shall be born." You know, he made you fearfully and wonderfully. And um, I am here to, to, to help you along that journey. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I was just trying to recall the other sessions and there's a common theme that I'm seeing in all these sessions. Mm. It's about conscious parenting, relationships, knowing yourself, knowing your purpose. And thank you. And I love that each guest explains it differently. So it just shows, guys, you might hear the same message differently and you might resonate with someone who said it the other way, which is meant for you. So mm. sharing your stories is quite key yeah. in evolving because if you are not going you are dying mm -hmm. and you don't mm -hmm. want to die without knowing your purpose without yeah. being ready because that mm -hmm. is why you are here on mm -hmm. this earth mm -hmm. to add value somewhere and as mm -hmm. Tandy we articulated it well is that you don't have to do it and say you live there you can live wherever you are planted so wherever you are planted you have to be there so don't say I don't want to be there just find out what are the lessons mm -hmm. You need to learn, and what is it that you need to impact wherever you are? So always look beyond what you you have been through. So thank you so much for sharing there. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't see any questions. I think we can close up. And for those who've been listening, if you have any questions, and if there's something. As Tanyu was speaking through our sharing, her change, mm. sharing being a mother, her relationship with her dad, her business, and there's something more you want to know, mm. just type in the comments and and you can take her as so well. She'll come back and respond. She'll just hear. Yes. Absolutely. So I know the stories are there to help you, to build. You are not an island. Help is always available. And you might be want to follow the career that she has been following, something that you've been desiring to do so ask mm -hmm. and shy away help is just there so thank you guys for tuning in and okay. yeah we are left with one session at 6 p.m so do tune in at 6 p.m it's another coach whereas i told you today we're filled up with coaches and the beauty about coaches the vulnerability and the vulnerability that we saw as well today with Tandy. and thank you for just being you thank you Thank you, and we appreciate you. And yeah. happy belated birthday to those. Oh, thank you. I'm telling you. <laughs> this is how 40 is like. Hey, it's yeah. time to woman up for me. Um, I thought I was womaned up, but uh, 
the the person of my dad has really like yeah it's ushered me into and I'm his firstborn you know so as women we 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 hold a lot of power um we hold a lot of power in 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 actually the 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 architecture of the world <laughs> because we are the ones who give birth you know to the the children the the future generation and um yeah so it's very important that um in whatever that we do you know that we are consciously aware of that. Thank you and enjoy your process. It's a lovely year to be in. You're just gonna discover mm -hmm. and, and, and I normally call it removing the onion. There's so much unlearning that you're gonna do and so much mm. revealing the diamond within you. And it's gonna yeah. be so generation. We wish you mm. all the best. Thank you so thank much. You. And to everyone who is tuning in, thank you guys from Facebook from Zoom and from YouTube. So do send us your comments and come back and respond to them. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>